At first glance, a billiard cue looks like nothing more than a simple piece of wood taken from deep within the forest. Yet in reality, nearly 7 million cues are manufactured every year to satisfy the passion of billions of players across the planet. Behind every smooth and precise shot lies an entire chain of extremely strict manufacturing processes, controlled down to the smallest fraction of an inch. From selecting wood with flawless grain structure, to meticulous shaping and machining, and finally to the perfect surface finishing stage, where not a single imperfection is allowed, ensuring the cue achieves maximum stability and ideal feedback during play. In this documentary, join the factor and as we step inside the production line to uncover the engineering secrets and craftsmanship behind how a professional billiard cue is truly made. Billiards began as grass field ball games in Northern Europe during the 14th century, later moving indoors and becoming a pastime of the aristocracy. The true revolution came in the early 19th century when Francois Mangot invented the leather Q-tip, making spin and precise control possible. From that moment, billiards evolved into a global technical sport. From that moment, billiards moved beyond palace halls and evolved into a global sport. The cue-making industry followed the same path, growing from small workshops into a worldwide market now valued at nearly 300 million USD. At its highest level, a billiard cue is no longer just sporting equipment. It becomes a luxury collectible. Handcrafted, one-of-a-kind cues, built with rare materials and master craftsmanship, can reach prices of up to 150,000 USD, representing precision, so heritage, and prestige. The production of a billiard cue begins with the most fundamental material of all, wood. The types most commonly used include maple, ash, ebony, rosewood, and hornbeam. The most critical criterion in selecting the wood is not its color or decorative grain, but the straightness and consistency of its fibers. If the grain is too wavy or uneven, the cue will be highly prone to warping and deformation over time. Wood that meets the standard for a cue shaft is typically seasoned and air-dried for many years until its moisture content becomes stable. Pieces that do not qualify for the main shaft are never wasted. They are often repurposed into accessories, cue rests, extensions, or components that are subjected to lower mechanical stress. In this industry, there is virtually no such thing as scrap wood. Once the appropriate wood has been selected, workers feed it into cutting machines, where it is precisely cut into sections of standardized thickness, preparing each piece for the next stages of shaping and refinement. As soon as the wood blank meets the standard, precise center holes are drilled into both ends to define a perfectly aligned rotational axis. This is a critical step because even a tiny misalignment would affect the straightness of the entire cue. The blank is then mounted on a lathe or a CNC system where all machining must begin from a flawless center. The square block starts spinning steadily while the cutting tool moves along its length, gradually shaving away the outer layers and turning the wood into a smooth cylinder. All wood chips are instantly removed by a vacuum system, keeping the cutting surface clean and stable. This is never done in just one pass. The first pass is rough turning, used to form the basic cylindrical shape. Then come finer passes, where the tool cuts more gently to achieve higher precision and a smoother surface. After each pass, the blank is removed and allowed to rest. These resting periods are essential because they let internal stresses inside the wood release naturally. Without them, the shaft could bend or twist later on. This cycle of turning, resting, and turning again is the key to creating a stable, straight, and durable wooden core. It forms the technical foundation that determines the quality of the billiard cue in every stage that follows. The cue butt is not a single solid piece. It is built using a tri-core structure made of three main parts, the sleeve, the handle, and the forearm. Each section is machined separately on CNC equipment with tolerances measured in thousandths of an inch. The process begins with the forearm, 
The wooden shaft is mounted on a CNC lathe, where one end is drilled and threaded to install a steel pin. This pin will later connect the forearm to the handle, and its concentric accuracy directly determines the straightness and balance of the cue. Next comes the handle. The shaft is machined to form the upper tenon that joins the forearm, then rotated to create the lower tenon, which will fit inside the sleeve and also house the weight adjustment bolt. This internal cavity allows fine control over the cue's balance and feel. Finally, the, the sleeve is produced. It is bored hollow on the lathe and cut to its exact final length. When all three parts are assembled, they form a perfectly aligned, precisely balanced cue butt, ready for the next stages of finishing. When all three components of the tricore structure have been fully machined, the cue butt enters the assembly stage. First, the craftsman arranges the decorative rings in their predetermined order. For the sleeve section, each ring is carefully slid onto the tenon one by one, and a layer of specialized adhesive is applied between every ring. After that, the outer sleeve is bonded permanently in place. Next, the butt cap and the weight bolt are installed to lock all the components of the sleeve together, ensuring the structural integrity and balance of the entire assembly. A similar process is then carried out for the rings above the handle section. The assembly bolt is coated with adhesive and threaded into the tenon, allowing the forearm to be securely joined to the handle. Once the cue butt has been assembled into a single unified structure, it is set aside and left undisturbed so the adhesive can cure naturally and reach full strength. After the bonding process is complete, the entire cue butt is transferred to milling machines and CNC lathes for two successive machining passes. The first pass removes excess material and any surplus adhesive left from the assembly process. The second pass precisely shapes the taper of the cue, refining its geometry and ensuring perfect alignment along its length. This multi-stage machining approach is critical as it allows the cue butt to achieve superior straightness and long-term stability after assembly. When the cue butt has completed its basic shaping, it enters one of the most delicate and refined stages of the entire process. Decorative inlay work. The cue is mounted onto a four axis CNC milling machine where the cutting tool moves with program precision, carving each inlay cavity directly into the wooden surface. At the same time, the machine cuts the inlay pieces themselves from ebony, composite materials, or metal, ensuring that the shape of each insert matches its corresponding cavity with absolute accuracy. Once the cutting is complete, the craftsman puts on gloves and carefully places each inlay piece into its designated slot, bonding them by hand using a specialized epoxy adhesive. To guarantee that every detail is positioned correctly, the craftsman can reference technical drawings and design images of the cue on a tablet at the workstation, checking alignment and orientation before fixing each piece permanently in place. After all the inlays have been installed, a cord is tightly wrapped around the entire cue butt to apply uniform pressure while the adhesive cures. This ensures that every inlay remains perfectly seated and flush with the surface during the bonding process. Once the epoxy has fully hardened, the cue returns to the CNC lathe for fine turning, where excess inlay material is removed and the surface is refined back into a seamless, continuous cylinder. For highly intricate inlay designs, the rejection rate can reach nearly 50% due to the extreme level of precision required at every step. The process of making the shaft still begins with a round wood blank and goes through multiple CNC turning passes to allow the wood to stabilize but the section with the straightest and most flawless grain is always selected for the tip end because this is the part that comes into direct contact with the cue ball. After the taper is formed, the tip end is precisely drilled to install a carbon fiber core, which increases structural stability and reduces vibration during play, while the opposite end is drilled and threaded to fit a steel joint pin, allowing the cue to be assembled and disassembled with absolute precision. After the shaft has been fully machined, the craftsman begins attaching the tip assembly. A specialized adhesive is evenly applied to the end of the shaft, then the ferrule is installed and aligned with precise accuracy. 
Next, a second layer of glue is applied to the contact surface, and the tip is pressed firmly into position. The tip itself is made from multiple layers of compressed leather, most commonly cowhide. Although it is only a small piece, roughly the size of a coin, mounted at the very top of the queue, it plays a decisive role in controlling the shot, generating spin, and delivering the distinctive feel that players experience with each strike. Once the tip is in place, the entire front section of the shaft is tightly wrapped with cord to create uniform pressure. This ensures that the adhesive spreads evenly and prevents any gaps from forming between the ferrule and the tip. The shafts are held in this state for approximately 24 hours, allowing the glue to fully cure. After the wrapping is removed, the cues are transferred to Kanban storage racks, where they are left to stabilize for at least another week before moving on into the surface finishing stage. In some other factories, the ferrule is driven directly onto the end of the shaft using controlled hammer force and bonded with epoxy adhesive to form the connection. After that, the entire tip area is placed on a lathe, where it is precisely turned down and shaped into the hemispherical profile required by customer specifications. After all components have been fully completed, the shaft and the butt are assembled together to form a finished billiard cue. The entire cue is then sent through a continuous sanding process, starting from the tip end and running all the way down to the butt. The purpose of this step is to remove every remaining tool mark and machining trace left behind by the previous turning and assembly operations while also leveling the surface uniformly along the entire length of the queue. Once sanding is complete, workers use compressed air to blow along the queue, or water to rinse it, ensuring that all residual wood dust and fine particles are completely removed before the queue moves on to the next stage. Once all mechanical parts are secured and the surface is fully cleaned, the queue enters the finishing stage. The process begins with hand staining, where craftsmen use cloths and soft brushes to work color deep into the wood, bringing out the natural grain while preserving its depth and character. Next, the queue moves into an electrostatic spray booth, where multiple layers of automotive-grade polyurethane are applied. The queue carries a positive charge, the paint a negative one, allowing the coating to wrap evenly around the surface as the queue slowly rotates. This is done in thin layers, not all at once. After several coats, the surface is lightly sanded and cleaned to keep the queue perfectly round and smooth. Finally, a premium high-gloss clear coat is applied, sealing everything beneath it. The result is a finish that is smooth, durable, and visually striking, protecting the queue while giving it the refined look and feel expected from a professional-grade instrument. Once the surface of the queue has been fully finished, it is moved into the stage of identification marking and personalization using laser engraving, where sharp details such as names, patterns, or special symbols are created without affecting the structure of the wood. In parallel, logos and colored graphics are applied through heat stamping or screen printing, allowing the designs to appear clear, durable, and long-lasting, while giving each cue its own distinct identity and character. After the assembly is fully completed, the queue is placed on a lathe where it undergoes multiple rounds of sanding and polishing, both manual and automated, to remove every remaining machining mark and create a surface that is smooth, deeply glossy, and effortlessly slick, delivering a truly premium feel in the player's hand. At the same time, the joint is treated as a critical precision component and is polished separately with equal care. Technicians ensure that both mating surfaces are perfectly flat, concentric, and free of vibration when assembled. When the shaft and butt are finally joined together, they must align with absolute accuracy, forming a seamless connection that feels like a single solid piece of wood. This flawless fit guarantees stability, consistency, and energy transfer with every shot, completing the transformation from individual parts into a cue that performs with confidence, control, and uncompromising precision. Before leaving the factory, every queue must pass through a final and uncompromising inspection. The craftsman places the queue on a perfectly flat surface and gently rolls it along its entire length to observe its straightness. 
Even the smallest deviation at the joint is corrected immediately on the spot, adjusting the alignment until the shaft and butt fit together with absolute precision. Once the cue passes the rolling test, its weight is fine-tuned using internal bolts, calibrated exactly to the specifications requested by the customer. The bumper is then installed at the base to protect the cue during regular use and handling. Only when all standards have been fully met is the cue wrapped in protective packaging, accompanied by a quality certificate and a unique serial number, ready to leave the workshop and reach the hands of the player. Some factories even go further by designing, sewing, and decorating custom cue cases in their own signature style, completing the product as a fully branded and professionally finished instrument. The journey of creating a billiard cue comes to an end, a journey driven by a production system that operates quietly with exceptional precision and discipline, where every single detail is controlled through multiple layers of processing, testing, and continuous refinement. Yet this process is not only a story of technology, it is also a testament to the enduring presence of human skill, judgment, and craftsmanship behind every machine. If you would like to continue exploring the hidden worlds behind familiar products with the Factorin, don't forget to follow the channel and leave a comment with the topics you want us to uncover in the next episodes.